It's the Queen's takeover here for changing the game. All female ass kickers giving lumps to you lames. Carolina boss lady giving orders cause she run it like a freaking assassin. You won't even see it coming. Got the Texas sports queen repping Houston for days. She's the voice of freaking reason. Keep you stupid at bay. And lastly, it's the Jester Delaware is a home. Talking crap to Jolie, your brains might get blown. And you know Kat and Kayla both a rep in the South. So you ever disrespect, you might get smacked in the mouth. Three women, one vision, podcast with a mission. Leaving haters so pissed, they be stumbling and tripping. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want that smoke. All female trio will make you lose that hope. It's time, so turn it up, let's get ready to go. It's the Queen's Takeover, ladies, start that show. We're back. We're back. We're back. I missed you, ladies. Missed you too. But it was nice to have a little break. No offense. I mean, it was just nice to have a weekend off. And you know, we we definitely need to do more double recordings just so we can get uh, a weekend to ourselves and do shit that we want. And Amen. you know, because I know Kayla's going to quit her job and go to a W or a MLW or AEW or some backwoods wrestle company shit to watch because she's so sick and tired of them saying no you cannot request off you must work at electrolux because you are a slave (laughs) um which is basically any job to be perfectly honest i mean it's funny looking at like somebody said you know what somebody was bitching like why does nobody want to work why are all these jobs hiring why does nobody want to work Because we're sick and fucking tired of working paycheck to paycheck and wondering if our paychecks are going to pay for our rents, pay for our bills, pay for food and, you know, bullshit that we have to go through to live and survive today. So it's like I said, it's nice to have it was nice to have the weekend off. Um, My con was a little frustrating, but um, my best friend Mika got caked in the face, which was awesome. Uh, by Mel Scrifano, who is the lead actress from Winona Earp. And oh. like that was the highlight of her birthday because it was her Aww. birthday. Oh, yeah. She told Mel on Saturday she was going to bring in cake because her birthday was on Sunday. And they're like, well, what do you want to do with the cake? At first, Mel's like, oh, Kat, can I smash into your face? And Kat's, um is the actress that plays Nicole Hot on the show. Right. And Kat's like, no fucking way. And she goes, because like well you can smash it in my face and so me and cat were basically standing there jaw like go for it and like the glee in mel's eyes was great like she was <laughs> so fucking happy to smash this cake in mika's face Aww. and and the best part is we didn't realize we had a fucking audience because we where this, the pictures were and where like yeah. the tables were there's like a whole you know upper level so they're all looking down after the picture and after the cake smash, all we hear was applause. And poor Mika had to run to the bathroom because the cake went up her nose. Oh, and, no. Uh, so she was like, you know, she was still uh, sneezing out purple icing. Oh, Lord. But, you know, um, I mean, despite some, and for the rest of the day, like, you know, a lot of frustration the rest of that Sunday, the trip was, I will give it uh, a seven out of ten. Just because I got to meet one of my best friends, Mika, um, had my other best friend with me and, you know, just to get out of the area and have a little vacation, even though it was in Bumblefuck, Ohio. Yes, I know it's Columbus. I know it's a giant ass city. and I know it's the home of the fucking Buckeyes and they had to stop me from turfing their field. And I fucking would have too. Um, sorry. There's one team that most school colleges will agree that they hate ohio fucking state i think a lot of people who are like clemson fans or lsu fans or alabama fans they will say fuck the buckeyes but on that note real quick we do want to send our condolences to Dwayne haskins family and friends and yes we yeah because that was like horrible tragic news waking up to yesterday yeah um right now from what i've read they have started and uh uh i read it somewhere that they're actually investigating what happened it's not considered just an accident 
Oh, okay. Um, so they don't know what people are saying. And Adam Schechter and that other motherfucker who wants to put bullshit out there, y'all need to stop tweeting. Y'all are fucking dicks. And um, there's one guy said, oh, he was playing to be dead or he was living to be dead. And I was like, that's a fucking dick thing to say. Uh, you know, even though he played for the Washington football team, now the commanders and, you know, in the Steelers, I, I felt that he was going to thrive with the Steelers because Tomlin Tomlinson has, is a fantastic coach when it comes to uh, quarterbacks. I mean, look what he's right. done with Ben for the past years. He's got, he was working out with Trubisky of all people. Like, you know, he's out there working with these guys. Najee Good, I think was with him too. I think I read that. Yeah. So it's just, it's very heartbreaking. And despite my disdain for Ohio State University, my heart does go out to them uh, and to every fan of his yeah. because it is tragic. And, you know, I believe the best thing that uh, somebody said, it was before this, something else had happened. Uh, they said, you know, just tell people that you love them. Amen. So. Amen. Amen to that. Oh, and y'all have to forgive me. I do because I do sound like complete another shit right now well that's because but, you're in dallas and you know i was you, in dallas we all know how fucking shitty that area is i mean i was in dallas <laughs> so, so just blame it on dallas dallas got you sick yeah it, 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 I, I the only thing i can't shame about dallas is my best friend's up there so i got to see her I, I got to see her i hadn't seen her before the whole everything went down with covid and everything so it was great to see her and and, and the family and everything Okay, so is, is she a, a Dallas transplant, or she lived there her whole life? No, she's a transplant. Okay, then it doesn't matter. Dallas, fuck Dallas. Okay. <laughs> now, she's a, now she's a transplant. We met here. In, we met here in the age. Uh, how was oh Kayla's my. weekend off? Yeah. How was your Sunday? How was your weekend? It, was, it had its ups and downs. Um, just basically been just trying to clean up and stuff for family. kind of did feel weird because, like I said, you know, Sunday is like the, yay, I get to spend time with, you know, two of my other best friends every day, talk, wrestling. So it just kind of felt weird. It was nice to have the breakout goals. It just felt weird not to be able to actually talk to y'all. But hey, like Jolie said, we deserve a break, you know, from time to time. So, yeah. Okay. So before we get into mania, did y'all have any questions for me about the rest of the weekend? Okay. Yeah. What the fuck is up with that uh, create your narrative bullshit? That looks like the most fucking backwoods bullshit. I mean, yeah, they did something cool for that one kid. That's fine. But, like, where was the audience? It it looks literally like a circus act from every pictures that I've seen. Um, And also, uh, Mr. Braun Strowman, Adam, who the fuck wears pink Crocs to a wedding? I know, I saw that. Not even like, gay men would do that. <laughs> Raquel, what the fuck? How the fuck did you let him out of the house with those? What the fuck? Do better, Raquel. Do better. No, uh, CYN was very unorthodox. Um, it was That's very dark. Da- saying it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it was it was it was very dark all over. It was very dark. They did keep, they kept the lighting very dark in there, and the before the show even started, they did have an actual dark match, and they started in the fucking dark. You can't you can you couldn't see the wrestlers at first, and then they turned the lights on like little by little. Um, some of the action was pretty good and everything. It was just a lot of talking at first. It was a lot of talking in EC three started off the show he was like bringing out like all the wrestlers and who surrounded the ring and everything felt a little cultish a little a little a little cultish and everything it looked like a mega rally (laughs) ec3 talks yes ec3 does talk i never heard a man talk in my life honestly yeah you're not you're not missing much i would rather listen to mgf talk than ec3 god yeah but um, the main event made made all of it worth it because it was um, it was EC3 and Adam Scher going against uh, Damo, um, formerly Killian Dane, 
and Eric Redbeard. And apparently it was the first time that um, Braun and Redbeard actually went against each other. And then afterwards they had a heart to heart in the ring talking about their brotherhood. It was the first time they went against each other and then they paid their respects to um, Brody and everything. And, um, and of course I got to see Cross actually in the ring and everything, which was pretty cool. And I made sure to send Kayla the video and photos so she can have it a little bit. And then, and then it's like, they, they did things their own way. It's like, instead of like entering the ring, it's like entering the narrative. And then the winner, um, not the winner of this match. And, and after they, when they announced the winner of the match, it's like someone so has controlled their narrative. I give it a six out of 10. And that's being generous. I think I've seen this film before and I didn't like the ending. <laughs> paging Jonestown. Paging Jonestown. Super do not drink the Kool-Aid. I repeat, Super- do not drink the Kool-Aid. Supercard made up for it the following night. Oh, yeah. Supercard was fucking stacked. Um, uh, I don't know if like you guys uh, follow Sledge on Sledge on TikTok. I do. He's been putting out a lot of stuff about, um, you know, he's being very informative, and I love watching his TikToks. And you know, people were asking about it. And like I said, if you don't follow Sledge on TikTok, go check him out. Uh, also check out his Twitch. The dude is very knowledgeable, and um, you know, he he made like I think he made a comment that about the fact that the ROH titles were all won by AEW guys. Pretty much. And almost, you know, I think I even said that's what I think I even predicted that that was probably going to happen or uh, might not have been recorded, but I think I said it to you guys in passing because it's like, I, I don't see, you know, Oh, let's make it like they're developmental. How can you make ROH developmental when it already is its own brand can stand on its own two feet and basically, despite the fact that I despise, loathe, hate, and wish they would never wrestle again, the Briscoes, they are, you know, one of the best tag teams in the world. You know, you've got a lot of great wrestlers in ROH. A lot of great wrestlers came up through ROH. Yeah. But it's just like, how are you going to take away the titles? Except for, I think, John Gresham. He kept his title. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but how are you well, basically... Well, basically, it was like him and Benedito. They were both ti- they were both title holders and everything. And it's just like it was like a unified, undisputed one. So yeah. But like, still, I mean, basically, FTR won the tag titles. Somebody else won a title. It's just like so predictable. A little bit. It, it, it kind of felt like when WCW got bought out by AEW or not the AEW WWE, and you know. Their titles got absorbed, but then WWE guys won them. I mean, the AEW or W, yeah. That's why WCW and AEW are fucking the same in my mind right now. <laughs> they literally are. All right. Yeah, no, I know what you mean by that. But also, but I do have to say this FTR and Briscoes and everything, that was one of the best tag team matches I've ever witnessed in my life. And then also, the idiots who were shouting fuck WrestleMania. Fuck you. Because nobody, all these other people would not even be in town if it wasn't for WrestleMania. So fuck That was you. another point Sledge made. He said Tony Khan could never do what Vince does during WrestleMania weekend. And it's the absolute truth. Amen. Because there is no way in hell that sideshow of a wrestling company and their cocaine-fueled <laughs> boss could bring hundreds of thousands of people or, or well, probably about a hundred thousand to 150,000 people to Dallas, not only bringing in revenue for the city of Dallas and the little out towns, mm-hmm. but it brought revenue to independent companies. Uh, you know, people that don't get spotlights, got spotlights. People were, who were able to try out for the WWE, you know, wrestlers, <laughs> college athletes, Right. Tony Khan can't do that. Not a million years. All right. WrestleMania it is. Okay. Here we go. So, Kayla, you were actually the only one who got to stay. You were, you were at home, watched both nights because it's like 
And so like with the commentary and everything. So overall, both nights, wh- what would you give it? Um, I would actually, uh, both nights together, I'd give it about an eight and a half. Eight and a half. Because, that's pretty, yeah, that's, I mean. That's, that's pretty solid. And once, you know, we, we continue to talk about it, but I'll, you know, explain, because I feel like there was some moments that should have been handled a little bit different than what they were. Right. All right. Let's get to the one you the, let's get to the one I know that you were the most excited about because for weeks, Seth didn't have an opponent. He finally found out he was going to WrestleMania. There was rumors, innuendos that a certain Cody Rhodes was coming to back to WWE, but you didn't want to believe it until it happened. It finally happened. Um, I loved the absolute the entrance, how they went black the fireworks shot up out of the ring and just shot up to the arena, uh, shot up to the stage. And I was just like, and all of a sudden I hear the dun dun. Mom and I screamed. And then we heard the wrestling has more than one royal family. Like, and it, it was, it was just that moment. It was just like, oh my gosh, this is happening. And um, now it, for his first match, I agree, it was okay, but it wasn't just, it really, not as great, it's just more like, hey, I'm back, I'm here to collect what I want to collect, and, you know, the different trivies and stuff he did for Dusty, and just, you know, different things, and the um, jump back on Monday Night Raw that happened, and the fact that Seth was in the ring with him and said, welcome home, it's just, you know, the crowd, you know, the wrestlers, um, it's just that, you know, just knowing that he's, he says he's not home. He's just bad to do unfinished business, but Cody, you're home, bud. You know, this is where I became a huge fan of yours when you were, you know, just starting out, you know, with hardcore Holly, um, your days with legacy, your days with, you know, who's currently happy over in AEW, your brother, Dustin, you know, is gold dust. I mean, he's, you know, just those moments and that the fact that you're back where it first started and, you know, to collect what you never really truly got. Um, as much as I'm a fan of Finn Balor, um, I would actually like you to get the U.S. title as well because you have never had that one. You've been tag team. You have been intercontinental. Uh, um, and another thing, you know, just knowing that he's going to be home, um, I saw a clip after Bianca became Raw Women's Champion or whatever. He she passed him in the backstage, and there's a picture where he's high fiving her, you know, congratulating yeah. her. Yeah. Um, it was just I don't know, just that momentum knowing that he was back. Yes, I believe it now. Obviously, obviously. Like I said, when I heard that dun dun, I knew that was it because there's nobody else that has that drop until his. And it's the fact. He's using that. He's got American Nightmare gimmick. And for y'all that can't see us because we're just audio, my Nightmare family flag is finally hanging up and Kat and Julia gets to see it. So it's just, and I've pre-ordered the new American Nightmare shirt. Got my mom one. Um, Julia won our EDO Sports Wrestling Prediction. She's going to have one in her box. You know, it's just, just that momentum. You know, I'm excited to see what continues. Yeah. So it's just, it's just that little spark as it's like, so, and yeah. <laughs> now nah, it's like, in, uh, Steve and I ordered shirts as well. So they're coming in too, but it's like, that was like, you, you mentioned it. And um, I'm gonna say this real quick before I turn it to Jolie and everything. That was like the one thing also, it's like, now we're not only getting Cody Rhodes, we're getting night American nightmare. We're getting kingdom. We get, we get everything that he's been building up recently. And I thought, and I'll, and I took the little video I took and everything. I was like, good call Vince. Good call. It's like, you let him bring over everything. So And the fact you got him, not just at that event, you got him raising through the, up through the stage. You had him raising up on raw and it's just, I think that's what pipes a little bit more, you know, like a huge Cody Rhodes fan. And the day that I, you know get that moment then that I actually get the chance to meet him it's just it's going to be even more epic than knowing that he's back exactly so and it's you know and I've heard rumors you know obviously she's getting ready to start her own cooking show which I'm happy for her but at some point I heard um saying that Brandy might eventually join him back but she's going to focus on cooking and you know take care of Liberty but I'm I'm stoked for just Cody I mean that's 
obviously the most amazing feeling right now as a Cody Rhodes fan. Well, shit, it's like if Seth has his way, I think he might want Brandy back even sooner for the mixed tag Which match. Which I think that was great. We'll see. I, <laughs> I love that. I love that. How, uh, what, who did, what did she say? What, Beth and Edge? She wanted Beth and Edge. And he's like, Brandy wrestles, don't she? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bring right. it. It'll be a good All match. Right. All right, Jester. Told you so. I fucking told y'all. Once he left AEW, he's coming to WWE. He was coming back. And to everybody that said, oh, he's going to be Stardust, go fuck yourself. I love when he mocks Stardust in the ring. That was great. Um, But I do disagree with you on one thing. I thought that match was fantastic, especially for two opponents that have never really faced each other in ring. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. (laughs) Um, It was a little slow to start, but again, like you have two guys that have never been in the ring, two different styles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just amazing that he could not get... AEW fans to cheer for him. He created that fucking company. And he got not one, but two nights of standing ovations. That had to be one of the loudest pops since Becky returning from SummerSlam. Yeah. Not even Ronda's was that loud. No, I I agree. And it's like for even if it was like the worst, what do you call like the worst kept secret and everything? Yeah, the pop was huge. I mean, the fact that you had Cody being chanted week in and week out, you know, while, yeah, we are a fickle fan fan base, but it's both sides, it's all sides. There is an innate love for the Rhodes family in WWE fan base. Because without Dusty, we wouldn't have Seth. We wouldn't have Roman. We damn sure wouldn't have Becky. Um, and we wouldn't have Sasha, Bailey, or Charlotte. That man forged the four horsewomen, hands down. That man forged the fires of the shield. So Dusty is in everything that is in modern WWE, Raw, and SmackDown today. And it's just sad that people don't know what it was like to learn under probably one of the greatest wrestling minds ever. And, you know, hearing Cody saying he doesn't know if he'd ever be able to go back to the PC, you know, just because that's his dad's home, you know, this is understandable. And, you know, I love the, like when he came out to kingdom, my first thought was, I want to go on Twitter and see these fanboys explode because that's exactly what they did. All I heard was, why is he using his music? That's AEW's property. No, it's not, stupid, you motherfuckers. That's Cody's. Y- y'all, you know, get on people so much. You know, oh, give the Hardy Boys their music. It's theirs. Well, it's Cody's music, bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rising Up, wearing a similar outfit to, I think, one of his last matches. Um, 100%. Uh, my second favorite match of night one. Oh, I know what your favorite was. Uh huh. The yeah. best match of the entire weekend. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> um. Uh, let me guess. Would it happen to be a certain women's match with a redhead and uh, an EST? Yep. There's nothing yeah, that the- AEW can put on. There was nothing that Ronda and Becky or. Uh, charlotte could have done and there's nothing that that uh fatal four-way tag match could have done don't get me wrong i love boss glow uh but y'all that match slay that match that fucking raw women's title match and you know when we were like oh it's gonna go on first nope where the fuck is it like my (laughs) same is like i want to go to fuck to bed because you know we're in we had to get up early yeah and it's like, where the, f- we want to go, like, we got to go to bed, we got to go to bed, we got to go to bed. And, but it's like, it finally came on, it's like, Jesus Christ. But, and I, and I kept it on for the second, I saw Seth come out, I'm like, okay, I got to see this. I got to see this. So, at first, Sam's like, it's the fiend. No, it's not. I said, it's Cody Rhodes. She goes, you're bullshitting me. I said, no, it's going to be Cody. I bet you. I was, I'm not going to take that bet. Goes, it is Cody. But the pop and seeing him in the ring, it's just like, you know, I remember his his spiels on AEW, and they were good. They were passionate, but there was just something 
different this time. Yeah. So I give kudos to, to Vince and for him for working this out. And if Brandy comes to wrestle, I really want Becky to call her Eden. Just once. <laughs> just fucking once. Oh, hey, it's Eden. Oh, I mean, Brandy. Like, I just want that just once, just because of the fact that they were so intricate in the start of uh, Brandy was like always the one interviewing her backstage. Right, so, right. <laughs> I, was like, I just want, oh, hey, Eden. Oh, wait, no, you're Brandy. But Man. yeah, no, definitely that match uh, out of five stars gets 10. Fuck you, Meltzer. Yeah, Meltzer, Meltzer can kick rocks, I swear to God. Oh, and, okay, and what the hell is, why do people have such a problem with Cody's first match on Raw being against The Miz? I don't get it. Let's see. The Miz is 10 times better than Sammy Guevara. Ten, didn't he face uh, QT Marshall? 10 times better than QT Marshall. Definitely better than MGF. The Miz is the top heel right now in WWE. Next to Roman. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They are the, he's the top heel on Raw. Right. And after he... Uh, Face planted Logan Paul. Oh, I, I, I'm going to get to that fucker in just a second. I became a Miz fan even more. <laughs> but the Miz is at the top of his game. Mm-hmm. He is a multi time uh, champion, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's intercontinental. Oh, yeah, he's a two time Grand Slam champion. Yeah. Who, who on AEW has done that? Nobody. Nobody. They only have. Two titles. And yeah. So people bitching about him facing the Miz. How can I politely tell you all to suck my dick? Because that match is gonna fucking slap. Mm-hmm. And um also, Tony, if you know who's supposed to be paying us bots, I would really like to know because I like my paycheck now. Yes, please, for real. <laughs> I've been I've been I've been hate y'all for free. But if we're supposed to be getting paid, like some Soros shit that the Republicans say that you know us us blue people getting I, I, where's my checks? Come on, Tony, where's my fucking checks? Right. Uh, Kayla, do you do you approve of this match for Cody on Monday against the Miz? He's going to be torn. She loves them both. She loves Cody more. I mean, like Jolie said, Miz right now is your top heel on Monday Night Raw. Um, it's he's always like I said, always like to state he always says you either love you or hate him. So you know, um, honestly, in my opinion, yes, I'm going to go for Cody. I want Cody to win, uh, but I do like the Miz. Um, but honestly, I could not right now on the Raw. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of people in there, but as a good kickoff to in ring competition for Cody. I don't, couldn't honestly not see anyone better right now than the Miz to start out with and just work your way up. Cause you know, top heel, you know, cause you know how Miz is. He's going to say something just to get underneath Cody, you know, skin. He's going to try everything he can, you know, to overpower him. Um, so honestly, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a good, good way to edge into stuff. Um, you know, heading towards what he really wanted to, you know, accomplish and, Unfortunately, I think, you know, Miz will lose, but hey, you know, it's it's going to be, and I guarantee he may not show it, but he'll give him, not show it where we see it, but more than likely at the end, Miz will give his respect to Cody. Because I know he did in the back of the days. I don't even think he really had any matches with him back in the days when he was there, but it's just, it's, I think it's going to be a good match. And I wouldn't have any other person, you know, to kick it off. Except, eh, no, there ain't nobody else. Nah, Miz is perfect. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back. Like, you said something about Finn Balor, and I know this was on night two, but you've got three members of the Bullet Club on Raw. You have Edge creating a fucking faction on mm-hmm. Raw. We could honestly get the Bullet Club on Raw. Oh, shit. <laughs> AJ, Finn, and Cody. I forgot about that. Yep. Oh shit! Oh shit! But then, what's the rumors about that? I don't know. I think it was you that sent the picture, cat, about how Edge had Damian, Finn, 
Shotzi. I I I was I, I live in Rhea. Well, it's like um, I was talking with the uh, who was I talking to? Chaos. I, I think I was talking to Chaos about this and everything. Finn probably won't. Finn probably part of the picture is probably going to be bullshit because he'll, he'll probably be teaming up with AJ and everything. Leah, I'm not 100 percent sure about him. Tommaso Champa, sure. Rhea, yes. Maybe Shotzi. I don't know, but it's just like I, I believe some of that picture. But hey, I'm all for the Bullet Club reunion. I mean, damn, Cody does kind of need some backup. So Finn and uh, AJ Styles would probably help out a former Bullet Club brother. I guarantee it. For real. And for and real. not only that, but if he's if he is going against the Bloodline, he like you said, he will need backup. And I mean. You also have somebody that's out there, Mr. Tamatanga, that has always been calling out Roman Reigns. So if somehow the Bullet Club does that and like, you know, they they open that little forbidden door just for a minute just to let Tama in. Yeah. I would love that. Just saying. Okay. I gotta get this off my chest real quick. Okay, because y'all brought his, y'all brought his stupid ass up. Logan Paul, I'll give you a little bit of credit. You had some in ring skills. Those who say he was better than Bad Bunny, please fuck off. Again, I say politely suck my fucking dick. <laughs> if you wanted to get I, I I will give you this credit. You did you did get a reaction out of the crowd of pissing a lot of people off. You do not come into the state of Texas and mock and do the moves of Eddie Guerrero. A, na- a, a legend here. Your Texas privileges are revoked. Keep your ass out of this state and don't ever wrestle here again. You piece of shit. Because I swear, he started doing the three amigos. And Kayla, I'm sure you probably heard, you heard this on the TV and everything. It's like the crowd, the, the, like, I never heard like a lot of fucking booze in my life and everything. No. Uh, what an asshole. I mean, if anybody wanted to, um, like I said, I'll give him credit. He did have some moves, but it's definitely was not better than Bad Bunny. Um, and it, it's just the fact, mom's like, what is he doing? What is he doing? I said, he's mocking Eddie Guerrero, not just once, not just twice. He did about three times. And it was just, if anybody wanted to do tributes to Eddie Guerrero, it should have been the miss. That would have been more respectful than for him doing it so so yeah him losing the then winning the match was you know utter bullshit because it's kind of kicked the face of Mysterios but the fact that Miz skull crush finale him that was probably the best damn moment of that whole exactly thing ever I, so. I accepted I accepted that after everything I mean you had him mocking Eddie and then you made him a baby face what was the fucking point like crazy. and yeah no Fine. They they want to settle who's better, Bad Bunny or Logan Paul, put him in a fucking ring. Hell, and most- just, from, just from the... the just, I'm sorry. No, oh, go ahead. No, I was like, well, just from what I read up and everything, Logan Paul really didn't need to do with the amount of training that Bad Bunny came close to. Hell, Bad Bunny moved to fucking Florida for like two, two three months while he trained for WrestleMania. And he wasn't just training. He was also putting his concert together, getting his tour ready. He was doing a million other things. And you got fucking Logan Paul walking down with a fucking Pokemon around his neck. Like, what the fuck was that about? Look, I'm a fucking nerd. But walking down with a fucking Pokemon card around a neck is probably one of the biggest douchebaggery things I have ever seen. Um... And the fact that you bitch asses say you're from Cleveland, you support the Browns, why the fuck did you come down in Steelers colors? Of all the fucking color combination, you come down in fucking Steelers colors. You look like a fucking Electra Buzz from Pokemon. Like, what the fuck? But again... Wait, wait, so that was a Pokemon card? Yes, that was a fucking Charizard card around his fucking neck. Oh, God, what a loser. I just I I despise that man so fucking much. I would spit in his face if I could. Sorry, I've never liked Logan Paul and never will like Logan Paul. So right. I give I give that match a two. Just right, for, just just for Dominic and Ray's outfits. 
<laughs> exactly. Because that was some representation right there. All right. So you mentioned the, this match earlier. So let's actually dive into it and everything. The Raw Women's Championship match. Happy times, happy times, happy times. We have a new Raw Women's Champion. We get to see Crazy Becky come out even more. Kayla, how this match come off on TV? Um, it was one hell of a match. Um, back and you know, back and forth, you know, just the momentum that those both share in the ring. Um, I know we'll get to it later, but part of me was kind of hoping that um, that Becky would be the first one to kick out of the KOD, but um, unfortunately, she didn't. But um, that match all together, no matter what Becky did, Bianca wouldn't stay down. Um, And, you know, Bianca, you know, congrats to her for having her second moment in WrestleMania, coming out champion. Um, But, oh, and uh, Bailey's going to return at SummerSlam and take it from her. I'm just kidding. No, (laughs) I'm kidding. No. um, no, She's not waiting until SummerSlam. Summer damn slam. <laughs> no, but there's a rumor that uh, Charlotte is going to lose at WrestleMania Backlash, and she's going to take time off, and somehow she's going to get drafted to Raw, just so could, Bianca can beat her. Oh, okay. Well, she is the last one, so. <laughs> but no, that match, you know, back and forth, you know, it was it was just great, and you know, they both had to dig deep in that match to figure out what can I do to get them. The fact that, you know, Bianca was trying to make Becky tap out to her own disarmor, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, You know, it's just the chemistry, you know, the momentum and just everything about that match. And, And like I said, after she won and came out on top, you know, it looks kind of torn because, you know, you want Bianca to have her second WrestleMania moment. Then you kind of want Becky to retain. But, you know, like Jolie said, it's time for Crazy Bex to come out. You know, sitting there staring around like Seth did when he found out she's pregnant. But it's just, it was a great match. Um, I honestly would give it a solid 10 if you had asked me to rate it. Um, and And then the fact that She's literally three out of four. She's got one more. She's got the queen. Um, to the throne, you're almost accomplished all your goals, girl. You're getting there. And I just won that tag team title and a money in the bank. And I think you're set. So um, I, I like to match. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, no, I loved it and everything. It's just like in, uh, the entrances were phenomenal, like, especially with Bianca coming out with the TSU marching man ocean of soul. That was just, that was just spectacular. And she had like the, even like the major gear going and everything. Oh, it was great. And uh, Jolly, I know you were doting on the match early and everything, but it was like, it was, was it everything you thought it would be? It was everything and more. I love the kickouts. I love the suspense about it. Um, I was actually fucking I felt bad if there's anybody underneath me for the ho- uh, dirt, cause we were on the third floor at the hotel. But when she came out with when she came out with that step crew and the marching band, I fucking lost my shit because <laughs> that was the coolest fucking thing. Um, it gave me that like John Cena vibe when yeah. he um, came out with like all the people that looked like, like you know the multiple Cenas. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was a twenty five. Yeah, I got that one too. <laughs> So it's like, you know, I, I had like that kind of feel to it, but like watching her step and, you know, seeing Becky come out with the, on her Escalade and, you know, I didn't like, that's the only thing I didn't like, you know, that's not Becky. So hopefully we begin the long process of Becky becoming back to being Becky again and not this wannabe David Bowie uh, eye face makeup. But the match was 100% everything that I wanted and it was... You know, it was heartbreaking because my best friend's like, are you sure she's going to lose? Yes, Becky's going to lose. How sure are you? 100%. But there's a chance? No. She's a big Becky fan, but she hates this this incarnation of Becky. I don't blame her. Like I said, like, I don't like this cocky Becky. I don't like the fact that she's like Seth. I don't like it when 
you become if you're a partner in the WWE or in any wrestling company that you're like like your partner. That just does not like sit right with me unless you're actually paired up with them. But they're not paired up right now. So it, it just just irked me a little bit. But other than that, it was everything and more. 10 out of 10. Uh, Meltzer sucked my dick. Um, everybody that called Bianca boring sucked my dick. You're racist. Yes, I said it. Anybody that like was calls back uh, Bianca out on shit, I don't fucking care. That woman is pure 100% talent. You're racist. You're a hater. And you can suck my dick. Exactly. And she's like phenomenal. And... I can't wait to see how Becky cracks under the pressure of trying to get back up to the title. Um, we'll see what happens. Like if she gets a rematch at WrestleMania backlash, but you know, we'll see. Yep. Oh, speaking of Seth real quick. Um, so I, I, I have a little bit of, uh, I saw a little bit of an interview and everything. And we have Mikazi to blame for his outfit at WrestleMania. I saw that. And I liked his outfit. I'm sorry, I did. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, going, hmm, if you did that outfit, I wonder what else he did. <laughs> like, no, I actually enjoyed his outfit on set. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. Night one. What else? Uh, oh, my God. 2022, and we actually saw Stone Cold Steve Austin in a match. I was not expecting that at all. It's like, I thought he was coming out for like a talk show, maybe a little brawl, drink some beers and everything. And then it's like, KO's like challenging him to like a, a no holds barred match. And then Austin says, bring down a ref. I'm like going, holy shit. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And, but it's just like, damn. And Austin took some, Austin took some hits and everything, but it's just like I, I, I it's like Jolie. I didn't think I was going to see that. Um, unfortunately, I turned off the TV at that time. Um, like I said, we had to be up early the next day. Did however, you watch it back? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, however, I knew he was going to wrestle. Um, there was something about that rumor a little while ago that he was going to get back in the ring. And, you know, you always want that one last match. Yeah. And I think that we got that one last match. Because I think that's it. He's done. But yeah, for real. Again, I did not have uh, Stone Cold Wrestling uh, on my bingo card for 2022. <laughs> I-, I have Apocalypse, but not Stone Cold Wrestling. No, definitely not. But I mean, I did I did mark off my uh, Tony Khan snorts cocaine and spews stupid shit on the internet, but that just needs to be an entire bingo card. Yeah, because I think he's done it like several times already, and it's April tenth. Yeah, but no, seeing Stone Cold in the ring, seeing the pop that it got, it made sense that it closed out the show, despite the fact that I did not like that 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 happened. I felt that if they're gonna have anybody closed the show it should have been the women you yeah. know you basically said oh you won the royal rumble you don't get to close out the show i mean i understand the charlotte match sucked um that gets a two yeah out of five i'll, t- I'll tell you something else about it when you when, when we're done with this but um because it didn't have the storytelling i mean like again if any match was supposed to close out the show if they didn't have the stone cold talk show it should have been Becky Bianca, hands down. Or Cody Seth. But that's just for the shock value. So I would probably have, like, I, yeah, I, I don't know how. I think after those two matches, you were kind of tired. And then Stone Cold comes out and then it just energizes everything. Yeah, just seeing Stone Cold in the ring and just how effortless it looked for him. And then the next night, where he Stone Cold stunned mcmahon and mcmahon fell and there's a video Mm -hmm. of mick foley laughing his ass off oh i saw that yeah but i will give props to both pat mcafee and austin theory for selling those stunners like fucking champs 
Oh, Vince, yeah, Vin, Vince is probably like, I'm sick and tired of getting stunned by you. I'm just going to. But no, uh, Stone Cold looked absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I, I would hope that he would have like maybe a more prominent role in WWE again, but we'll see what happens. But it was a good way to close out the show. Man. Kayla? Um, I had a feeling a little bit that Kevin was going to trick him somehow as far as a match. I didn't know how it went. Um, but the fact that Stone Cold's after wrestling, like you said, he took some pretty hard hits. Um, part of me was like, oh, no, he's not getting up. What's going on? You know, but he got right back up and fought. Um, my mom was hoping that he would bring the beer truck in a couple of times, you know, just for <laughs> spreading the crowd. But he got his beer. And, um, in the fact, the person that was thrown it to him, one went right by him and he's just like, really? And then the fact, you know, he stunned Kevin twice and it was phenomenal. And then of course you got Byron Saxon to come up in there and trying to get stunned. So it's just like, dude, you got stunned last year or last time he was on raw. Why do you want to get stunned again? But right. Cause he sells um, it like a champ. Right. <laughs> But, it, like Rhonda said, like a lot of people have said that she was upset that she didn't close out the night, but she says she felt like she could share that moment because obviously Texas is so cold. But I admit, um, I do still think, you know, yes, Rhonda won the Rumble. She should have been there. But like Joey said, if you're not going to close out with your Royal Rumble winner, it should have been, you know, Becky and Bianca. Or heck, even the Cody and Seth or something, you know, more right. than that. Um, but hey, Kevin, he beat your ass, so get over it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. No, nah, but it's like, yeah, that Charlotte Ronda match, it was like, I was so disappointed and it. it was completely boring and everything. And also, it um, also didn't help the audience and everything that... Um, Kayla, I don't know if you noticed this while it was on TV. Like a lot of people were like looking off in another direction at first. Like, but, um, now apparently, like what what was happening? Like in one of the lower sections, my nephew was telling me like uh, I think some people were getting into a fight because there was like a bunch of security guards and everything, um, like storming on one section. It just happened to be during the Ronda Charlotte match and everything, and people were like getting distracted by that. I'm very very unfortunate, but the match was. I was, I was that was like the one besides what happened with the smackdown tag team title match and everything that was like my that was like the worst match of the night for me for real it was just it was just so many moments it was just like you know honestly i know that if ronda would just would have held that arm i would have held that arm bar arm in and not let charlotte get to the rope you know she could have had the match if the ref would have woke up you know, it's just the fact she's going, hey, are you okay over there? Come on. Oh, yeah, what happened? She gets a kick. But, and it's just, it was, it was just a very, very, two, I mean, you got two wonderful wrestlers in this ring, but it was a very, 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 very frocky match. And it was just, I felt like, you know, yes, there wasn't, um, huge momentum build up like Bianca and you know Becky had, but right. it was just it could have it could a little bit more if Charlotte would have came out on top. Yes, but it was a very messy match, and it was just I wouldn't say one of the worst matches in history, but because there's been worse. But oh yeah, but I'm just saying it for the um for having the baddest woman on the planet versus you know the queen it should have been a little bit better than what it was. So Definitely, for sure. So if I had to honestly give it a rating, sorry, ladies, I love you both. I would have been happy either way, but just because you both were in the ring at the same time and I got you guys got to see you guys fight. I'm giving it a three just because of just a little, you know, like I said, messy here, messy there. And, and it's just, just a, a little crazy. So. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, um, because of the Bianca Becky storyline, the match that should have happened was Becky and Ronda. But you already had the established storyline. So 
yes, we have the possibility of, you know, Charlotte taking time off and losing the title to Ronda. And maybe that gets Becky gets drafted to SmackDown, which is fine because we should have a shakeup coming up soon. Normally it happens after WrestleMania that they do a little shakeup, but you know, that's a story that needs to be finished as well. And I don't take anything away from Charlotte and I sure as fuck don't take anything away from Rhonda. They're both fantastic athletes, but there are a lot of people out there rooting against Rhonda and I understand why. So it is what it is. I, you know, she, she's got a little bit of a troubled conspiracy past. And if she was to leave WWE and go anywhere, she would probably fit in well at sin. Um, but again, I, I'm always going to be a fan of Rhonda's despite her stupidity. Um, when it comes to certain things. So I would love to have like an honest to God conversation about her with, with her uh, when it comes to certain things that she said in the past, like, you know, she, she, she has uh, said a little bit about bad things about the trans community. And I would love to have an honest to God conversation with her about that. Um, and to, I try to understand what her mindset is and where she's coming from, because with everything that's going on right now, there is such a fucking war against the trans and gay communities. It's not even funny. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if we can get somebody like Rhonda back on our side, that'd be great. But I don't know if we'd be able to. Because, I, like, again, like she said some stupid shit in the past. I don't, I don't know if she's changed her mind. She doesn't really talk about it. But so I know a lot of people are rooting against her just for that alone. So it's just it's just frustrating because, again, and I'll be honest, you had a lot of wrestling up to that point. And it kind of gave me WrestleMania 35 vibes for the main event because everybody was just so exhausted. Yeah. And people just wanted to go see Stone Cold. So, like, you know, people were just fucking exhausted at that point. And, um, but yeah, I I will tell you, being disappointed that match, uh, it you said you wanted uh, Becky to kick out of the KOD. We didn't have that happen, but we had something else happen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Somebody kicked out. kicked out of the end, end of, of days. days. I was like, I thought that match was going to be sucky. It actually wasn't. I know. I lo- it was really was good. good. Yeah. It wasn't the bathroom break I thought it would be. And the fact of what how Mad Cat Moss pissed his pants there at the end when he took the sword and shattered the ring ring rope that was just great. And that just proves that those are not ropes; those are actually fucking wires, <laughs> because you saw the sparks. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and somebody's like, "Oh, they they blew it apart." You don't blow it apart that cleanly, you stupid idiot. That was actually a very sharp claymore sword. That was used to use in the past for beheadings in Scotland. Yeah. To cut that fucking wire. So it has to cut through bone so it can cut through metal wire. I'm surprised they did that spot in the middle, like in the middle of the show and everything with him cutting the wire and everything, because it's like between the matches, those guys were like running like bad out of hell. Just like try to change them out and get the ring back up for the next match. It could be that they wanted to change out the ropes, too. They sometimes do that mid-match. But, you know. One way to do it. <laughs> sure as fuck one way to do it. Half, <laughs> half the ropes are already taken down. Okay, let's just, let's go again. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Don't get, don't, pe- people who love Boogs don't get mad at me for this. I'm kind of glad he got injured. But only for this. We don't got to hear the fucking guitar anymore. I want the violinist back. Oh. 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 Okay. 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 That, that's the only reason why. I love Boogs. He's hilarious. He's entertaining. But I want my violinist back. Especially, yeah. especially yeah. if he's going to be the first up for Roman and everything. WrestleMania backlash. Violinist. 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 <laughs> But it was just something so special. Like, and it doesn't matter if it's the guitar, 
but the violin just has something haunting about it when it comes to Shinsuke. I fucking love it. Um, and just hearing the crowd, 70,000 people singing his theme song. There's just something epic about Shinsuke's theme song. For real. Oh, and, and another funny thing, you know, I, I was on Twitter not too long ago, and I see Cody Road tweeted something about having a pizza party in Detroit, and Bailey's like, I like pizza. She's been trolling all over the place. I don't trust I love. She I love Bailey. Says. I fucking love Bailey. Bailey's trolling so hard right now. And um, hey, Corey, Carmela, congratulations. But take a long vacation, please. I am so not, sick of I'm not so too, sick of you. Not too long because Jerry's filling in. Yeah, Jerry's taking over on commentary for Corey while he's out. Not too long though. Yes, but he's not as annoying as Corey is. <laughs> and oh, and also got- oh, speaking of Corey and Carmella, did you see that picture that was leaked when uh was it Monday Night Raw? The lady just sitting there staring when they were sit when they were sitting there making out. They're like, yeah, there's yeah, a picture. Yeah, she was just look- like I mean, if looks uh, if looks could have killed, I mean, I swear that would have been the look of the night. <laughs> right? For real. <laughs> I probably would have done the same thing if that was me. But like Really, y'all? Get a fucking room. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, I mean, if they're if they're that insufferable. Dating. God fucking help us! Can we split them up, please? I mean, I I. Well, let's get to the tag women's tag match again. Phenomenal! All eight competitors are at the top of their game. I fucking love all eight women in that ring. Uh, all right, sorry, I'm sorry. I love all seven women in that ring. Fuck Carmella. I'm sorry. I do not like her. I, I don't like her. I'm sorry. The only time I've ever liked her is when she was with R Truth. There's just something about Carmella that rubs me the wrong fucking way. It could be that she's the fucking quintessential Jersey girl. Pretty much. That, Even though she's from Long Island. Yeah, but she's got that fucking Jersey attitude. True. Very true. Um, I mean, I would have loved for any. Oh, oh, all right, I take that back. Didn't want Natty and Shayna anywhere near the titles. I want Shayna and Ronda to go for the tag titles. That is my tag team. Sorry, Natty. I love you, but fuck off. Give me Shayna and Ronda. Or Shayna and Dakota. Either or. But watching that finish with Naomi and Sasha and Sasha finally getting that proverbial monkey wrench off of her back and getting the dub at on the biggest stage of them all i was so happy i wanted to cry i almost cried and then to watch zelina beat the ever loving fucking shit out of carmella was the best thing ever this is why i always will hail queen zelina right zelina is everything she is the perfect heel and I would kind of love to see her versus Bianca in solo in, in singles right now, um, just because. But y'all missed out on a fucking opportunity of putting her and Raquel Rodriguez together because they've been both talking back and forth to each other on Twitter. That would have been an awesome powerhouse tag team. You know, perfect muscle for somebody like Zelina. Because what muscle is on Carmella? The only muscles that there's not, her brain isn't even that strong. Yeah. I mean, well, her boobs, they're fake. I mean, there's nothing, I'm sorry, I do not like Carmella. She's probably an awesome person in real life. I just hate the fucking character and I just want to bitch slap her every time. I want to pull a Will Smith. I'm sorry. I want to pull a Will Smith when I see her. (laughs) I do not like Carmella. Yeah. But yeah, so Sasha getting the proverbial monkey off her back. I like the back and forth with them and Liv and Rhea right now. Uh, with Liv getting that roll up, that was fantastic on SmackDown. Oh, I, I, and I, I saw something about that match too and everything. Um, apparently, they brought in Curtis Axel as yeah. for, a try, for a tryout for a producer and everything. Under the supervision of TJ, he produced that match. Yeah, that was a fantastic match. 
That was brilliant. And and just for everybody knows, Curtis Axel is still in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> he has never been thrown out of the Royal Rumble. So every of these winners that have gotten for the men are all fake because technically he's still in the Royal Rumble. Oh God, Jesus! All right. So either way, okay. Now, Kayla, I know your favorites didn't win, but what did you think about the women's tag tag match? Um, I love all women in that ring except for Carmella. Um, and it's just. Every time she's got to get to the ring, she's got to wear that stupid mask. Oh, my God. If, you, if you're afraid of getting hit in the face, honey, you don't need to be a wrestler. I'm sorry. No. And she gets balls to the face every time she's with the Corey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he I sucks can't. your damn face off. So, I mean, what's the difference? Um, no, Sasha getting her favorite, you know, finally getting her WrestleMania moment was awesome. And then Naomi getting t- titles. First ever Black American women's champions which is awesome as well so history making moment i didn't have a problem with that um but you know obviously kind of was still hoping for Rhea and Liv but then again you had the tag team that i've been wanting together so that one was kind of hard you know as well so but um from what we've seen on smackdown um I told mom, I said, I don't know how this is going to go down. I told mom, I said, after we watched SmackDown, because you saw Shayna and Natty watching live, you know, pin Sasha. I said, all I want is, you know, it may or may not have. I said, all I want is Liv and Rhea to get the tag team titles on Monday Night Raw. Not have a short reign, two, three, four days, only to lose them on SmackDown, Natty and Shayna. She said, you're so wrong for that. I said, hey, I didn't say how long I wanted to have the title reign. <laughs> No, because if you do that, that's fucking bullshit to Sasha because that that would be that she can't keep a title. And that's just that's just wrong. She needs to hold those titles till at least SummerSlam. Naomi and Sasha need to hold those titles for the next three months, at least. I'm sorry that we can go back and forth between all of them and have great matches, but you need to have them be a superior team and then have Sasha or Bailey blindside Naomi and have Sasha look like she's going to attack Bailey and then they both jump Naomi and we have the return of Bayasha. There we go. You little conspiracy theorist, you, I swear to God. (laughs) And if it happens, then we know Vince is fucking listening. I know, right? (laughs) I know, right? All right. I got to get back to what uh, y'all, you swapped everything real quick. There was one thing I wanted to read. I got to get back to night one for one second because I got I got to read this tweet and I sent it to y'all on the text message, but this was fucking ridiculous. Night one real quick about Charlotte and Rhonda. I understand defending your kids and everything, but Rick, quit smoking whatever you're smoking. He tweets out, the greatest women's wrestling match I've ever seen. So real and authentic. Thank you, Rhonda and Charlotte, for changing the game. Ooh. Really? <clears throat> a little hamster wheels turning for the gesture. <laughs> it's like she wants to say something so bad. It's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> Fuck it. Ric Flair, I'm going to step on your hand so you can never fucking tweet again. Their match sucked. And this is coming from somebody that loves your daughter in ring and out of the ring. She's one of the nicest people. You've destroyed her. You are a piece of shit human being. I'm sorry. The best women's match of the entire weekend was Becky and Bianca. And the fact that you couldn't even recognize the greatness that was in the ring for that screams racist, sexist, and an asshole. I'm sorry. I'm done with Ric Flair. I will not shed a fucking tear when he dies. Because I'm so sick of his shit. I would cry first for racist Hulk Hogan than I will for Ric Flair. As the Iron Sheik would say, go fuck yourself, Rick. So sick of him. He needs to learn to shut the fuck up. So He's I take trying it he to stay relevant. On the podcast. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> if he ever came on this podcast, I would fucking quit. Okay, <laughs> deal. 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 No, <laughs> deal. No Ric Flair ever. <laughs> I just had to like she was going. I, I, I would I would take Tony Khan over Ric Flair. Damn, that's saying yeah. something. 
Well, at least if he came, at least Tony Khan came on here, I'm pretty sure once Jolie nailed some shit in his brain, he might be a change man. <laughs> I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. I, I saw the tweet and I wanted to ignore it. I wanted to ignore it. But then you send it back to me in the group chat. You're like, like, really, cat? <laughs> I'm like, you know I fucking saw this because somebody already retweeted it and somebody called him out on his bullshit, but I still had to see it anyway. I'm thinking, are, are we sure he was watching wrestling and not porn? Yeah, exactly. Because that was just a brawl. It, it was more like a brawl than an actual wrestling match. The women's yeah, match that. they had at WrestleMania 35, the triple threat with all three of them, was better than that. The Survivor exactly. Series match, where even though Ronda got her ass beat with a kendo stick, was better than that. Yeah. Because that actually meant something. Exactly. That was fighting for pride. This was just stupid. This was trying to force a match down people's throats that they didn't want this match. Nobody ever went, nobody wanted this match from get go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Off the bullshit, off the bullshit. All right, back to back to night two. Can we talk about Pat now? Oh yes. All right, screw it. Let's go. All right, let's go straight to Pat. Let's go straight to Pat. <laughs> I got to admit, you know what? Fuck Logan Paul. Pat McAfee coming out with Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. Yep. With the Dallas cheerleaders, despite the fact that it was the Dallas cheerleaders punting a football. <clears throat> into the stadium, into the crowd, and beating the ever-loving fucking shit out of Austin Theory, winning that match, then losing to Vince McMahon, then getting his ass stunned by Stone Cold Steve Austin was the greatest ever. That made up for the Charlotte Sasha or Charlotte Ronda match. It made up for Logan Paul. That was everything I fucking wanted it to be. I loved it. I he loved was it. fantastic in ring. And you know that he's learned a lot. He worked with with so many great people. He wrestled fucking undisputed eras. So you know he probably called up Adam and Kyle and Bobby and went down to Roddy say, hey, how can I beat the fuck out of this little snot nosed little shit? Because they probably don't like Austin Theory either. You know, I, I just I, I just feel that he just excelled so fucking well in this match. And he honestly has become my fam- favorite color commentary. I mean, he just is fantastic on the mic, and he was fantastic in the ring. That is definitely, um, I will give it four. Just, I would give it a five, but, you know, you had Vince ruin it, so. But, you know, I got to admit, for being almost 80 years old, Vince looks fucking good. Man, still jacked like a fucking muscle head at the beach. Oh, no, that's true. No, it's like I was telling you on the text message and everything. After that whole weekend, I had Kingdom and Seven Nation Army in my head so much, I downloaded them on my phone. Yeah, but it's just like, it, it was like the crowd was, when Pat came out, he was like, he, he already had the crowd over so much. And one reason that I had to go back and definitely watch his, because when I saw he grabbed the he grabbed the headset from the commentary and everything. I was like, all right, what the hell is he saying? I'm, Cause I'm sitting in the stadium. like, all right, what the hell is he saying? I gotta, I gotta go back and watch it for sure now and everything. But it was just like that whole moment was spectacular. And can we give props to Michael Cole for when he called that match? You can tell just by how he called that match, how well those guys, how much those guys respect each other, love each other, support each other. It's like, Cole had his back from jump and it was just so proud. It's like, he felt like a proud partner just to, uh, just sitting there and call that match. Cause it's like he, McAfee got his moment. He got his WrestleMania moment. I honestly would have loved it if I found out later that, you know, cause I didn't watch it live. I watched it later. I watched the, the clips of it. Um, I, I would have loved for like, you know, Austin to try to go after Cole and Cole just smack the shit out of him. And just, you know, I, Michael Cole, all right, when he first started, he annoyed the fuck out of me because I was a good JR, uh, JR and King fan. I, now I can't stand either one of them, though I will take the uh, slight upgrade over Corey Graves for the next week. But with that being said, like, you know, SmackDown is the best announced team. N- no offense to Byron or the middle guy or Corey, but there's just something about their chemistry that is absolutely makes you want to watch SmackDown. You know, watching 
Pat is a fan first, a commentator mm-hmm. second. And that's what makes him the best commentator that they have ever had in the modern era. Yeah. Because, you know, Jesse Ventura was great. Monsoon was great. Even Vince was great for his era. But Pat adds that extra level of love, devotion, and excitement that, the, that resonates with the fans. They don't have that on Raw. And I wish they did. I wish they had somebody else like that on Raw. Because the announced team is just fucking flat. And I feel like all it is is Byron getting bullied by the other two guys. Mainly Corey. But it's like Byron's just constantly getting bullied. And I don't like that. I hate that. Um, it's just like, I, I just wish they had... You know who I wish was on the commentating team and I really wish that she would do it. I wish Beth was on the raw commentating team or somehow Renee came back because Renee would keep fucking Corey in line. I miss Renee. I'd rather rather have Beth. Oh, I know. But like, I I, I would rather have Beth too because Beth would definitely keep Corey in line. She'd probably step on his foot underneath and tell him to shut the fuck up. I don't care what Vince (laughs) is saying. You're annoying the fuck out of the fans. Yeah, really. But like, Pat's energy, it just makes SmackDown worth watching. Even when the show is shitty, he makes the show worth watching. So I am so glad that he got his WrestleMania moment. I'm so glad that he got his ass stunned. Um, because you know, every like no matter what they say, everybody wants to get stunned by Stone Cold. Everybody wants to get choke slammed or tombstone by The Undertaker. Everybody mm-hmm. always wanted to get super kicked by Shawn Michaels. And everybody wanted to get the pedigree from Triple H, the chop, from douchebag flair. You know, even the stink face from Rikishi. Or getting hit with the twist of fate from Matt, the swanton from Jeff. Speared by Edge. You know, there, there's, like, it's it's a, a list of people, like, of that era that, like, if you're fans and, like, you're our age... Like, yeah, you want to know what a, a sweet chin music feels like. You know, so just seeing him get to live our dreams, like, you know, if we all felt like Pat McAfee that night, because he, again, is a fan first and foremost. Yeah. And like, you know, like I know watching the celebrities do this, but like, you know, every, but we never knew Bad Bunny was a wrestling fan. We never knew Logan Paul was a wrestling fan. We know Pat McAfee is a wrestling fan. Hell, he's, so got like, a, he's got a ring at his house. Exactly. And so just having him there and be an extension of the fan base itself was kind of cool. And I like that about him. I think, you know, as much as he annoyed me in NXT, something happened when he came to SmackDown. Something switched. Mm-hmm. And he became so much better. Right. Ay, ay, ay. For real. Kayla? Yeah, um, when he was in NXT, I couldn't stand Pat McAfee, but when he came to SmackDown, you know, and connected with Michael Cole, I mean, it's just one of those, I don't know, it's just amazing that he got his opportunity in the ring, the fact that he was comment, trying to commentate his own match, um, <laughs> in you know, stun in the beer, and can we talk about McAfee's jump to the top rope. Yeah, I know. I know he did that before one of his matches in NXT and everything, but it's just like, damn, it's like to pull I mean, that off at WrestleMania too. It's just like, yeah, shit. and it's like, I remember him doing it in, you know, match against in NXT, but I don't think I really paid attention to it. Yeah. Because it was just like, man, Adam Cole and Pat McAfee, really? I don't really care. But the fact he was, and it was, and he jumped to the top rope, and I swear, I think Austin's like, "How yeah. did you?" You know, um, exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have to give it at least a three because, you know, he got his moment, he got his win. Austin got his ass kicked. Um, then he got stunned by Stone Cold. Then he was just, you know, laying on the floor and. Cold had passed him a beer and he's just sitting there, you know, drinking the beer. One of the just... best gifts that came out of the whole fucking weekend was that him laying on the floor, passed out, <laughs> passed out from the stunner, but he's still drinking a beer. I was like, oh my God. But Jesus. that, other than him 
you know, then Vince came out and beat his ass poor Pat. Uh, but, I don't even count that much. But, you know, it's it was just that great moment altogether. And I honestly don't even think, you know, this um he cared that he got by um Vince McMahon, like on SmackDown, it was um where Xavier had came out and says, Oh, it's after WrestleMania. Um something about uh it's record WrestleMania reset. record reset and Michael Cole goes, um, so your match against um Austin Theory don't count. He says, Neither does the Vince McMahon. <laughs> So it's just their chemistry and, you know, yeah. I know Michael Cole has said that, you know, Corey is literally one of his best friends, you know, keeps them, you know, together. They're awesome together. Um, you know, if, like we had talked a while back about drafting wrestling promotion, um, me and Julie would probably go neck to neck because I would have to take Pat McAfee and put Pat McAfee and Michael Cole together. For real. It was just, you know, and I just love them. You know, like Jolie says, something when he came up to SmackDown, something changed. You know, the fact that, yeah. you know, he, I think with him being an actual wrestling fan before he getting where he's at now makes it even better. Um, and believe it or not, the more I think about it, you know, we would have to maybe once we, you know, get really up there, more popular, we're, but maybe like one day, heck, even if he leaves WWE, that's one thing we need to try. Get Pat McAfee on podcast. That'd be, that'd be one hell of a, episode slash interview man pat mcafee taking all three of us women on <laughs> he, I think he could do it i think he'd be up for the challenge he would hell yeah <laughs> ladies <laughs> <laughs> might want to bring and actually there's three of us three of us and one of him so he might want to bring michael cole or somebody for backup he might no, he'd, pro- he'd probably bring some of his boys from the show <laughs> he would take them on exactly <laughs> no but yeah overall like i said i mean that crowd the crowd was like definitely into it from the jump and it was just like such a damn feel-good moment and yeah like i said i don't count that shit with vince and everything all right so this one's kind of running along and everything so let me just kind of speed this up and everything so kayla any other highlights moments from night two that stood out from you that for you excuse me i'm, t- I'm babbling um most people know that you know like a little passion for like wrestling writing has kind of died for me I mean it had its moments where I started Saturday they start they fall back and it feels like a couple moments I step back um but the whole fact that Cody's back it's just just hopefully you know continue to build the momentum and I'm just going to just go ahead and jump straight to it and just go y'all I said it go ahead and acknowledge him you need to bow down to your tribal chief and let him know he is the greatest of all time and yes congratulations to Mr. Roman Reigns for retaining which my mom saw something online that she thinks Brock Lesnar might be retiring and stepping away that he wanted to come back as this Brock to leave a good note with the fans because he didn't want the fans hating him as he retired, which I can understand that. I had not seen that. It was something that she found the other day, something I don't remember. See if I can find it again or whatever, but, um, and I'll send it to you all, but she saw something about that, but Hey, if that's the reason, then hell yeah. I mean, but, um, yeah, just, acknowledge him i don't want to i don't I'm care just... you gotta do it anyway <laughs> i did buy his funko pop while i was at the store so um i got two so i've acknowledged him more than i got his i don't think it's his shield one I... no no it's the one where he has the uh shield i think i think it was right after the shield or whatever but i have that one in his uh pop out a little bit okay. yeah but other than that um i oh wait back to stone cold the stunt uh i thought was funny the ramp where he looked down at the ramp stone cold just shakes his head uh-uh and then goes turns around goes gets the atv and drives the atv down to the oh uh, that's from night one yeah yeah and then another one stood out where kevin tried to get away and kevin couldn't figure out how to start the atv <laughs> that was great i mean 
that was just that was just epic. But WrestleMania, you know, it had its ups and downs. Parts where you know you're like, why didn't that? Why didn't that happen? Or you know, whatever. But out of all, eight out of ten, I'll give it credit. I mean, it just. It was great. Anything? I couldn't say anything bad, anything about anything at all. Anything else from night two? Pat McAfee, um, tag titles. We've all covered that. I've been, um, Drew McIntyre kicking out of end of days was the greatest highlights of ever. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Oh, that was night one. Uh, Edge and AJ? Okay. That was a great match. Um, little one, it was one of the matches that, you know, you've been happy either way um, in that match. And then the fact Damian Priest came out, that kind of, that was a shocker, but we kind of saw it coming. But, yeah, you know, curious to see where that's going and where AJ's all alone. Right. But is it, well, technically not alone because he's got Finn and Cody in the back just doing nothing. So we'll see. <laughs> hook it up, you know, make the connections. Um, I'm trying to think what else. What's that team? Sammy, uh, Sammy and Johnny Knoxville. Oh my God! Don't bother. <laughs> Most jackasses, jackass and shit. Awesome. It was crazy getting everyone involved. Um, and that was great. And then the fact that Sammy ended up in the giant mouse trap, and then someone handed him a piece of cheese on SmackDown, just kind of. <laughs> Unreal, but um, yeah, that that, that one was crazy. It, it was hilarious at so many times. Like I said, giant mouse trap just kind of just topped it off. <laughs> so, uh, how did how did Matt, McAfee, McAfee said it? He said something about the SmackDown biggest rat is now been trapped or something like. That. Oh jeez. Whatever. It was along those lines, but it was That's great. crazy. Ay, yeah, yeah. All right, Jolie, I know you had to catch up with some of it and everything, but it what, what stood out from night two? What else stood out from night two for you? Definitely the AJ and Edge match with the appearance of Damian Priest, who just stood there and just at the spear out of nowhere was awesome. Um and like I said, it was gonna be a giant episode of Jackass for that match. I was shocked that they let um Johnny win because of the fact that two celebrities already won. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of like a shocking moment for me. Let's see. But no, uh, I agree with Kayla. It's eight out of 10. Um, they need, in all honesty, and I will say this emphatically WrestleMania, no matter what some of the uh, IWC says, uh, it definitely needs to stay two nights because it's a nice break. Yes, it's a long weekend of wrestling, but yeah, it's it breaks it up and you have more chances to go around and do things. Also, one other thing, AEW related. Hi, Brody King. You don't know me, but Edge and Damian Priest are not a knockoff on the House of Black. Technically, the House of Black is a knockoff of the Dark Order and a knockoff of the Ministry and the knockoff of the Brood. It's something that it happens throughout all of wrestling. ECW has it, and New Japan has it, ROH, TNA, Impact. They all have dark fucking groups, stables, factions. It's not a knockoff. Stop being a dumbass. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I know Malachi said the same thing. Like, you know, oh, they see that we're doing something good. This has probably been in the works for a long time. It has nothing to to say that, oh, they copy us. Guys, wrestling has copied and copied and copied and copied. There is nothing fucking original in wrestling. Hell, some of y'all wrestle fucking blob dolls. I digress. I am looking forward to seeing what happens with Edge and Damien. I'm looking forward to see what happens with AJ. Um... Monday night was a big blow to Bobby Lashley. Is he becoming a face now with the fact that MVP is picking almost over him? Yeah, Are that we... was like that was like the storm of the night. Now, I did say he was joining the hurt business. I just didn't say how. 
Um, but again, this could also lead to Bobby teaming back up with Shelton and Cedric. And, you know, hey, Vince, there is an amazing African-American female wrestler out there. Her name is Big Swole. I think she'd make an excellent addition to your uh, company. And she'd make an excellent addition to the Hurt Business if they team up together. Just mm-hmm. saying. But um, WrestleMania is always going to be WrestleMania. You're, you're going to have so much ups and downs. And there will never, I don't care what anybody says. You're never going to have a perfect show. No. There will always be something that fucks it up, that makes it feel off, that, you know, just, uh, the rhythm isn't right. It happens. No matter how hard you try. Look at any match with Sammy Guevara. You don't really want to watch those. But you can't look away because it's like watching a train wreck. Look at Orange Cassidy. I'm sorry, all he does is shin kick people. Look at, I'm trying to think of WWE, uh, NXT. Oh, um, anything with Harlan and Joey Gacy. I hate those two guys. Oh, oh, and they fucked up when they took uh, Papa Steiner. Yeah. They fucked up. They fucking fucked up. <laughs> but I'm kind of hoping, you know, if they, they don't put the, uh, or if Ron has the title back again, right? Yes. Now, if Braun loses the title, I kind of hope that he gets called up, but they, or, or when he, he goes, my name's not Braun Breaker, it's Rex Steiner. I want that. Yeah. I want that so fucking much. Especially since everything's been kind of like meld over and everything now, so. But yeah, no, I, Hall of Fame, the, the whole, from all the independent shows that I saw pictures of, and saw videos of to SmackDown, to Stand and Deliver, Hall of Fame, Night One, Night Two, and Raw. And even SmackDown this week with the return of Lacey Evans as a baby face. Shocking, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this character. I'm actually excited about the direction that WWE is going. I, I have to admit, it, 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 this feels fresh. This feels different. This feels new. Right. So, and this is a long episode, so. Oh, it's two-night event. It's a fucking week-long event. I know, right? Jeez. Kayla, you want to add something else? Um, I'm going to jump to the Hall of Fame. Um, first of all, Chad's wife did amazing with that speech, um, keeping it in, and then the fact that JTG came out and did the handshake with Chad's son was just amazing. Um, that was, it, I was teary. Um, I was trying not to cry, but you know, just all that whole thing was great. And a funny thing is, Undertaker's entrance, we laugh about how it's always long, but at the Hall of Fame, his speech was actually longer than his entrance. He got to that ring like crazy. But I just want to say, very emotional, inspirational. Um, just everything that he touched base was just amazing in that speech. And like I said, I never really sit down and watch Hall of Fame unless it's I actually have not really sat down and watched a whole Hall of Fame more than one time, except when Beth got inducted. Um, but just sitting down, you know, watching Undertaker, thank everybody, told Stephanie McMahon that she's like the sister he never wanted, you know, just different things that, uh-huh. you know, thanked everyone. Um, even brought Kane. He's all my bad. He don't want me to call him Kane no more. He wants me to call him Mr. Mayor. <laughs> um, and it's just how he thanked everyone. HBK t- um, talked about, you know, Michelle, how much he's made her as his, you know, being his wife, he made her, made him a better person and just, just very emotional, inspirational. And I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Taker, for just just opening up and letting us know exactly how everything got started with you. And thank you for everyone else for the Hall of Famous. Because I didn't watch all of you. Because some of you were kind of boring. But other than that, Undertaker and Chad definitely stood out to me altogether. And I will say this. I kind of like the idea of having you know, 
the Hall of Fame be an extension of SmackDown? Since it was right after. It actually seemed like, you know, I'm not staged. It's like these are people with energies and they got to got to see Taker, got to see the Steiner brothers in the ring again. And, you know, I didn't realize what Charmel really did. And just seeing her in ring sound like, you know, it just how awesome of a manager that she was. And it was nice that she got the recognition, even though everybody's like, well, what the fuck at first? Um, and Shad and his Shad's wife, um, that, that killed me. But yeah, Taker is the last of a dying breed. And Vader. That was, though I saw a lot of people thirsting after Vader's son, which was kind of weird. Because apparently he was cute. I don't know. But yeah, no, they, I, I like the extension of SmackDown being with the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to see if they keep it like that going forward. <sighs> WrestleMania weekend was absolutely incredible. Um, I'll just end it, I'll, I'll end it with this. It, wrestling, WrestleMania week was absolutely incredible. It was four days of wrestling, the longest stretch I've ever done. Um, I got got to do as much as I possibly could because, again, I also wanted to put in, put in some time to see my best friend and also rest and everything. So I didn't want to, like, go hardcore the whole time doing like thing every single second and everything but i made definitely made the best of it and can't wait to see what happens um next going forward with wwe all right and one more sign out congratulations to ryan cabrera and alexa bliss as they oh yeah definitely they got married yesterday again who wears pink crocs to a wedding (laughs) yeah i saw the the whole picture i was like you gotta be kidding me Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>